This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So if we go through and have a look at discontinued operations, so that the other side, if you like, of your non-current assets held for sale. Remember, it's effectively two standards within one overall accounting standard. We need to go through and have a look at these discontinued operations. So there's three things that, that we need to focus upon. I think the big thing for yourselves is to know what the disclosure is so that you can computate whatever disclosure numbers appear within the financial statements with again the focus here being predominantly on the statement of profit or loss but before we get there there's just some rules some chat effectively you just need to learn them again it could be a non-computational question within the exam uh, so we need to be able to define what a discontinued operation is uh, and then look at when it becomes discontinued because when it's discontinued it can then be disclosed. So to look at the definition uh, of a discontinued operation, the easiest way to look at it is that if it's been sold, disposed of, if like closed down, then it's discontinued, isn't it? It's gone. Okay, It no longer exists within your business. So it would be a discontinued operation in that year. But you just got to be a little bit careful because these things don't just happen like that, do they? That You don't just decide, right, I'm going to close... Uh, a big line of my business, it's not being very profitable, next day it's gone. It takes a period of time, doesn't it? It could be weeks, more likely to be months, it could be a year or longer. So what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to look and think, well, okay, even though this business is still continuing, uh, there has been a decision made to get rid of it, so therefore it will be a discontinued operation. So that can't happen until it's been sold. But what the standard does is it brings in the criteria of being held for sale. So you're committed to that planet. It's highly probable that this sale is going to take place effectively within the next 12 months. But what you also need to do as well is there's just some additional criteria on top of the held for sale, i.e. highly probable criteria. So it needs to be a separate major line of business or geographical area because without it being a major line of business or geographical area, you're unlikely to have the information at hand to be able to go through and make the disclosure. Likewise, it needs to be part of a single coordinated plan. So it's not like you're disposing of bits and pieces at different points in the future. It's all going all at once because, again, otherwise, how do you identify what part is discontinued, what's still continuing and, and so forth. That becomes too much of a challenge. And then also there's a small little bit as well. Uh, is If you've bought a subsidiary, and again, that's just beyond your level of knowledge at the moment, it's into group accounts, and you're looking to buy it, to sell it on at a quick profit, then that is a discontinued operation. And then the key focus for yourselves is that it's a separate major line of business or geographical area. And it's a single coordinated plan, i.e. there's some detailed data about that geographical area or that line of business. And it's all going in one. It's not going in, in several stages in sort of piecemeal disposal. So that's the definition. So when is it discontinued? Uh, well, it's discontinued if it's been disposed of. Uh, you disclose it in that year of disposal. And if you decided to hold it for sale then it will be disclosed in the year that is held for sale. So it could span two accounting periods. It could be that in the current year, it's held for sale, so it's discontinued. And then the subsequent accounting period, when it's disposed of, it will also be discontinued. It's not just going to happen potentially in one year. It could span two accounting periods. And that's why IFRS 5 was implemented, because previously the rules were that things were just discontinued when they were sold. So once they'd gone, but that was just a little bit too late for some of the users of the accounts. They wanted more upfront information. So when has the decision been made? It's held for sale. That's going to be earlier than when it's physically disposed of. So therefore, let's make that disclosure sooner. And then the final bit of information, again, your focus from a numerical perspective is on the profit or loss. So on the statement of profit or loss, you disclose everything up to profit for the year uh, on the face. Uh, or sorry, you disclose the profit for the year from discontinued operations on the face. 
and then the, the detail breakdown you could include that on the face as well but uh, it's easier to go through there and include it within the notes which is what we were saying there okay everything up here is continuing and then what you do is you take that discontinued figure and you just move it separately uh, and then combine the two together to get your total profit okay or the breakdown of the revenue cost of sales admin distribution uh, pre-tax profit tax expense throw it within the notes uh, the cash flows again you can separate out the cash flows from continuing and discontinued again you've got choice on the face or on the notes on the sfp i suppose is maybe a little bit more relevant than on the cash flow statements uh, if it's fully disposed everything's gone so you know there's nothing to to show but if it's held for sale then you would show those assets as being held for sale now it's a line of business uh, geographical area there's going to be lots of assets there's going to be lots of liabilities so effectively that sort of brings it back doesn't it to where we were right at the start in terms of talking about where was it nope i'll find it there voila this whole idea of disposal group so you've got this single coordinated plan to dispose of uh, a separate line of business or a geographical area then you would show the assets and liabilities separately as being held for sale that's it that's the that's the techie stuff so what we'll do is we'll go through and have a look at a couple of examples to piece it all together so i'll see you all again very shortly